Hello, my name is Bruce Plozer, and this animation is demonstrating the biological process of intramembranous ossification. During fetal development, intramembranous ossification results in the formation of bones, specifically the flat bones of the skull, the mandible, and the clavicle. To begin, intramembranous ossification takes place in mesenchymal or fibrous connective tissue. In the connective tissue, mesenchymal stem cells come together, or aggregate, and then begin replicating. After sufficient replication, these mesenchymal cells begin differentiating, becoming bone-creating osteoblasts. These newly formed osteoblasts then release an uncalcified bone matrix known as osteoid. The osteoid is then calcified with the addition of calcium salts and other minerals. The enzyme alkaline phosphatase acts as a catalyst in this process. As the animation portrays, osteoblasts, when surrounded by calcified bone matrix, can differentiate further into osteocytes, which house themselves in hollowed out living spaces called lacunae. These cells support the bone in maturity. This first process is known generally as ossification, and where ossification takes place is known as an ossification center. As intramembranous ossification continues, osseous branches, known as spicules, are formed. These spicules will eventually touch one another and fuse together, forming a larger piece. Seeing as mature bone is highly vascular, spicules will grow themselves around blood vessels. This also allows for increased nutrient and waste exchange during these crucial developmental stages. The initial bone formed from intramembranous ossification is known as spongy bone due to its sponge-like appearance. Through the process of bone remodeling, the osteocytes at the edge of spongy bone can reorganize themselves into tightly packed bundles known as osteons. These osteons are the foundational building blocks of compact bone, which is then formed on the outside edges of the spongy bone. This layering of compact bone, spongy bone, and compact bone again is the defining characteristics of bones categorized as flat bones. Through a different process of bone remodeling, the middle layer of spongy bone can be removed, creating a medullary cavity. The final structure of completed bones is the outermost layer of connective tissue known as the periosteum. The innermost portion of the periosteum is composed of fibrous connective tissue. In this tissue, more osteoblasts can be produced, allowing for the bone to grow in width. This is known as apositional growth. In review, we began with mesenchymal stem cells, which, after replicating, differentiated into osteoblasts. The osteoblasts then released an uncalcified bone matrix, and after the matrix was calcified, they differentiated again into osteocytes. The initial bone created by this process is spongy bone, which can then be remodeled into compact bone. Examples of bones created through intramembranous ossification are the flat bones of the skull, the mandible, and the clavicle. This concludes my presentation. Again, my name is Bruce Plozer. The software used in this video was Tomb Boom Studios and Apple's GarageBand. The prompt for this video came from Grand Canyon University, specifically their Anatomy Physiology 1 Bio 201 class in the fall of 2013. Thank you for watching.